with two Taurus small frame revolver reviews under my belt, the 856 Executive Grade and the 856 Defender with tungsten Cerakote finish, it was time to step up to a larger and more powerful model of the Taurus revolver. So, stay tuned and find out all about it. Did you know that a matchlock revolver with a single barrel and four chambers, which is held at the Tower of London, is believed to have been invented sometime in the 15th century? Did you also know that a revolving three-barrel matchlock pistol in Venice is dated from at least 1548? Also, during the late 16th century in China, a five-barreled musket revolver spear was invented. And around the same time, the earliest examples of the modern revolver were made in Germany. Weapons featuring a single barrel with a revolving cylinder holding the powder and ball. What is for sure is that Samuel Colt was the first to bring the revolver into common use with the design and production of the Colt Patterson in 1836. And since then, revolvers have been used in conflict and in peacetime throughout the world and are favored by some over semi-automatic pistols. Up until the late 1880s, the revolver reigned as king of handguns. That was until Hiram Maxim introduced his recoil-powered machine gun in 1883. Other designs followed. The first semi-automatic pistol, by Salvatore Dormus, was followed closely by the Schoenberger Lawman in 1892, with the first commercial auto-loading pistol. More recognized is the Mauser broom handle semi-automatic pistol, the C96, that Paul Mauser introduced in 1896. One would have expected the revolver to fall flat, upended by the self-loading pistol, but it did not, and today we have some of the finest revolvers, both single-action and double-action handguns, available to us. Since 1941, when Four Haas Taurus created the company's first revolver, the company has brought forth revolvers like the Judge, Taurus Curve, Taurus Spectrum, Taurus Raging Hunter, and more small, medium, and large frame revolvers. Today, I am looking at but one of Taurus's medium frame revolvers, the Model 66, of which there are four 357 Magnum versions at the time of this review. A 4-inch matte black oxide, a 4-inch matte stainless steel, a 6-inch matte black oxide, and a 6-inch matte stainless steel. Of these four, the 4-inch matte stainless steel version is the revolver for this presentation and I'm going to start with the specifications.
introduced in 1978 and comparable to the K-Frame Smith & Wesson line of revolvers, the Taurus Model 66 falls right into place at a more reasonable cost. Relatively light in weight and still small in size compared to L-Frame revolvers, K-Frame size revolvers have been protecting the self and home for quite some time. The Taurus Model 66 is a fine example of one of today's very large family of medium-sized revolvers. So, let's take a look at some of the features. Due to its stainless steel construction, this Model 66 makes for a nice firearm where humidity is a problem. I live in the south. In the summer months, humidity is a problem. Or, should I say that body split is a problem. And stainless steel is not as susceptible to corrosion as blued steel. At the end of the day of carry, a stainless firearm that I happen to be carrying is wiped down with a silicone treated cloth, as would be any blued steel, parkerized, or other treated firearms. It's just a routine measure that I do to help protect my investment. The 4 inch barrel is nicely formed at the muzzle end and is topped by a ramp sight with insert that helps to locate that puppy when you are trying to hone in on a target. I'll get to the rear sight in a bit. There are no markings on the left side of the barrel, and the right side only displays the serial number. On the bottom of the barrel is the caliber, 357 mag. A plus when handling the Model 66 is that with a 4-inch barrel, the revolver feels nicely balanced in the hand, with a full complement of 7 rounds chambered. The barrel features a nice full shroud that protects the ejector rod from damage, with the styling being slightly reminiscent of the Smith & Wesson Model 586-686 L-frame revolver. Although the Model 66 is probably based more on the Smith & Wesson Model 19 and 66. Following the top of the barrel rearward, you can see that the barrel seems to be indexed properly with the frame with improper indexing being an issue, even with more expensive and higher quality revolvers. Following the top strap to the rear is a nice, fully adjustable rear sight. On a revolver intended for self-protection, some favor fixed sights, as they are less prone to snagging on clothing when drawing from or inserting into a holster. I will say that I am somewhat on that same fence, as, here is that word again, it is somewhat unlikely, during a close encounter of the worst kind, that the sight will actually be used and pointing and shooting will be more in order. However, having a good adjustable sight to look through is advantageous, as I tend to shoot high without one. The rear sight is plain with no outline. It is adequate for combat use and is something that I'm used to peeping through. Just below the top strap is the cylinder. And just below that is the trigger. Let's cover the cylinder first. The Model 66 is a 7-shot revolver, and which was introduced by Taurus in 1999, shortly after which, 6-shot versions of the Model 66 were retired. These 7-shots can be a 38 Special, 38 Special Plus P, and 357 Magnum, or a mixture of, as you prefer. The cylinder also of matte stainless steel, locks up tightly with the usual side play being evident. I don't know of a revolver cylinder that does not have side play, and the Model 66 is no different. Some side play is necessary, but should not be excessive. With that said, there is no end-to-end -end play. Timing seems to be right on the money, with the cylinder stop dropping when it should and re-engaging the cylinder just before lockup and locking the cylinder when the cock position is felt and heard. The Model 856 that I reviewed had chamfered chambers to aid in loading. The Model 66, however, does not have chamfered chambers. Just to mention, below the cylinder on the right side of the frame, you will find the source of manufacturing, importing, and the serial number and model number. Just to the rear of the cylinder, also on the right side, is the Taurus logo. Locking and unlocking the cylinder is the job of the cylinder latch, and like most revolvers, with Ruger, Colt, and Dan Wesson being exceptions, unlatches with a forward push of the cylinder latch. The 
The cylinder deforcing cone gap, or the flash gap, is two thousandths of an inch. That is tight, my friend. The cylinder locks up at three points, the locking lug at the rear that is operated by the cylinder latch, the bottom locking lug, and a spring-loaded crane locking lug. Let's drop down to the trigger, shall we? The trigger is a double-action, single-action type with characteristics of most double-action, single-action triggers. Long, heavy double-action with a relatively light single-action pole. The trigger is the standard curved and flat type with a trigger shoe wide enough to please the trigger finger. Double action trigger reach with a provided grip is approximately 3 and 3 quarter inches with a single action trigger reach at 3 and 1 quarter inches. The double action pull weight on this trigger is 9 pounds 4.9 ounces with a 5 pull average. Single action pull weight is at 2 pounds 7.6 ounces with a 5 pull average. There does not seem to be any stacking of the trigger with a double action pull, and finding the staging point is quite easy, as the trigger just pulls very nicely to that point. The double action trigger pull, while heavy, is typical of that found on most revolvers of this nature. Single action trigger operation has a slight take up until resistance is felt, after which 2 pounds and 7.6 ounces of pull completes the cycle. The trigger, of course, operates the hammer. It is a slightly curved affair with enough material and texture to aid in cocking and decocking of the revolver. The hammer is rounded to help prevent snagging, but one never knows until that happens. I usually, or at least try to when I remember, place my thumb on the hammer when drawing from and inserting into a holster, so I really don't concern myself with snagging. Just to the rear of the hammer is a key lock safety mechanism, for which Taurus provides two keys. With the hammer down, turn the lock to the right with the key to lock down the hammer and prevent the trigger from cocking the firearm, and to prevent the hammer from being pulled. Turn left to unlock the hammer. By the way, the firing pin is internal to the frame and not a floating firing pin on the hammer. And before I fail to mention it, Taurus Model 66 incorporates a transfer bar safety that prevents the hammer from striking the firing pin unless the trigger is pulled, either in double action or in single action mode. Now, let me get a grip on the grip before we head into the maintenance segment. The grip is a semi-hard rubber finger groove square butt style that actually feels pretty good in the hand, at least in my hand. The sides have a mild pebbly texture while the rear totally envelops the back strap, almost completely. I say almost because they do not seal completely at the back strap and at the top of the back strap. The finger groove spacing should satisfy most hands, and a bit of cushion is provided for the middle finger when firing the revolver, and the trigger housing moves rearward against the middle finger during recoil. I would like to say that I prefer a bit more girth on a grip, so I'll say it. I prefer a bit more grip girth, but that's just me. With that said, grip does provide something the whole hand can, well, get a firm grip on. My propensity is to exchange grips with something that appeals more to my style, like wood. But when shooting magnum loads, I do appreciate a grip that can buffer the recoil of such better than wood. In short, these grips will remain on the Model 66, To sum the features up, let me just say that the Taurus Model 66 is a very attractive revolver with pleasing lines, nicely finished while still conveying a look of utility, and the fact that 7 rounds of 38 Special, 38 Special Plus P, and 357 Magnum can be fired adds to the usefulness of this revolver.
1. The firearm may be cleaned and lubricated under normal conditions without the need of any disassembly. Do not disassemble the barrel. 2. In special conditions, such as repairs, when disassembly is necessary, it is recommended the firearm be returned to the factory or sent to a qualified gunsmith or to the importer. 3. In order to keep a gun in perfect condition it must be kept clean and covered with a slight film of good quality oil to prevent corrosion. This is especially necessary after use. 4. For normal cleaning of firearm not used or kept in storage for some time, it is necessary to rub it with a lightly oiled cloth. In the same way, proceed with the bore of the barrel. The barrel should be clean and left free of debris. The excess oil must be removed, but a thin protecting film should remain. Also, the dust should be removed from all crevices with a small, clean brush. 5. For cleaning after shooting, it is of special importance that all residues of powder be removed from barrel and other adjacent areas subject to such deposits, using an appropriate brush. If particles of lead are detected in barrel, they must be scrubbed with a brass brush, drenched with oil. Once cleaned, lubrication should be done as above described. When shooting more than 200 rounds in a row, your firearm should be cleaned before further shooting. 6. Do not keep handguns in contact with materials that attract moisture or possess a certain degree of acidity, or in environments with great variation of temperature or of humidity. Avoid the use of holsters of cloth or of any other material that can retain moisture. 7. If the firearm is to be stored for a long period of time, extreme care should be taken with metal surfaces in order to protect them against corrosion. Well, there you have it. Use it for what it is worth to you. Now, let's get to the range, shall we? One thing that I have come to expect when taking a firearm to the range is that it is different from every other firearm that I have taken to the range, even if it is from the same manufacturer. Every range experience with a new firearm is a new experience, sometimes even after multiple range sessions. Things sometimes change, but most often it is the operator, me, who changes, adapting from one firearm to another or even to the same firearm, but at a different time. Every range experience is a story unto itself. Today, no different. I have been reviewing quite a few revolvers of late, and each one has a different range story to tell. Today, let's see what the Taurus Model 66's story is. Being capable of chambering seven rounds of 38 Special, 38 Special Plus P, and 357 Magnum, the accuracy and functioning of the Taurus Model 66 pretty much set in stone. My performance with it, however, may not be so unwavering. So, buckle up, because here I go. I'll make notations regarding ammunition used and such as I progress through the rain session.
Packing and concealing a Taurus Model 66, not an easy thing to do, as it is a sizable revolver. I can say, however, that it can be carried and concealed, given the right conditions, clothing options, and method of carry. The widest point on a revolver is the cylinder. The cylinder diameter of the Taurus Model 66 is one and a half inches. There are semi-automatic pistols whose total width meets or exceeds that of this revolver. Still, in the shape of the body above the hips, for most folks who do not have an abundance of love handles, and even for some who do have an abundance of love handles, is more forgiving of a revolver's cylinder than with a semi-automatic's flat profile. The four-inch barrel can be a challenge, not so much for carrying, but finding a suitable IWB holster, if that is your method of carry. OWB holsters for the Model 66, on the other hand, are plentiful. Any holster that will fit an L-frame Smith & Wesson 686 Plus 4.125 inch barrel should work with the Taurus M66. Some IWB and OWB holsters have a profile that aid in lowering the overall profile of the revolver, like pancake style holsters. For me, Carry would be a Falco A112 Hawk holster for hip carry, and which I have on order, and which also works for the Ruger GP100, Smith & Wesson 686, and Taurus 627 Tracker, among others, and a Falco Rotor Shoulders Holster System for carrying weak side under the armpit. For me, these holsters fill my cool to cold weather carry, with summer carry usually being with a smaller firearm and different holsters. There are other holsters, from what I prefer, of course, and I invite you to research to find what's best for your IWB or OWB carry needs. The Taurus Model 66 357 Magnum Revolver with a 4-inch barrel has a lot to offer, especially when it comes to cost of ownership. A comparable size Smith & Wesson Model 586 686 Plus will set you back around $979 if you pay full MSRP. Taurus Model 66, for comparison, is around an MSRP of $569 but can be had for less with some dedicated searching and bannering with gun or sporting goods stores that carry them. I can't speak to the longevity of a firearm, as that is dependent on many factors, but I can speak to the quality of build of the Taurus Model 66, at least of the model that I am reviewing. The quality seems to be in place. It handles well, it shoots well, with 38 Special, 38 Special Plus P, and... 357 Magnum ammunition. Although I would carry 38 Special Plus P for duty use and leave 357 Magnum to my Ruger GP100, unless I had to absolutely fire them in the Model 66. A steady diet of 357 Magnum takes a toll on a firearm, regardless of the firearm. For speed loading the revolver, I can recommend the HKS 587-A, as it is very compatible with the cylinder of the Model 66. I am not enamored by the grip of the Model 66. I don't mean the angle, trigger reach, etc. I mean the grip that came with the firearm. Although the grip material is adequate, I would like to feel a grip with a bit more girth to it, but I will admit that it seems to do the job it was intended, provide a good surface of which to grip, and help reduce some felt recoil with all loads. A nice square butt target grip might do well with this revolver. That's only speculation on my part. The Taurus Model 66 is an attractive revolver. The matte finish is well done, and overall, the 66 handles well under fire. Perhaps you should have a look-see at the Taurus Model 66. Doing so might be worth your while. Well, here I am again, wrapping up another chapter in the Range Ronin Chronicles. I hope that you found this review useful, and we'll consider coming back for more of the same. 
Until we grace each other's doorstep again, stay vigilant, stay armed, and stay safe out there.